did you know that over 50% of journal submission never make to peer review because they get desk rejected? Yes, that's right. Over 50% of those papers never reach a reviewer. I bet this happened to you. You feel frustrated, you feel really unhappy, and you want to discover why this is happening. You're in the right place because today I'm going to share five personal tips based on my experience. Hello everyone, I'm Professor Rino and I'm a scientist with over 10 year experience in research. I've been publishing over 100 journal papers and I am an editor for three important journals from Elsevier and Springer. The sad reality is that important journal receive thousands of submissions and the quality of most of those paper submissions are not at there in level of quality. So it's really important that before you even start the process of submitting your paper, you're 100% sure that the quality is up there and the peer review process and the help of the reviewer will allow you to bring that journal paper to the next level and be suitable for journal publication. That's right, the quality, it's the key in the full process. Don't expect the reviewer to do your job as an author or don't expect the reviewer to do the job of your supervisor if you are still a PhD student. So let's go and see the five tips that I can share with you. I hope this video will help you with the full process. I'm going to share with you the most important tips at the really end of this video. So stay with me and let's go and have a look at the first tip. Tip number one. Are you submitting the paper to the right journal? Many people might think that the only criteria to select a journal might be just looking at the impact factor and you of course want to publish on the highest one because you want people to read your paper, you want people to cite your paper, but most of the time you need to keep an eye open on the right journal for the right paper. The most important things to identify the best journal is to go through the reference of your paper you will identify that probably you have been citing several times same journals over and over and over. So it's really important that your journal submission is aligned with the scope of the journal so you avoid wasting your time and the editor time. So let's go and have a look at tip number two. The structure of the paper is another key important feature to keep in mind when you run your submission. That's right, you need to structure the paper in a really specific order. Generally, the structure is always the same. You make sure that you have an introduction, a background section, then you follow with your methods, results, description, and eventually, at the really end, the conclusion. You might think that it's really easy to structure a paper like that. You might expect that everyone does the same, but I can guarantee you that many authors try to avoid writing their own final discussion. I know that it's really challenging to write a discussion, but it's essential for the full paper. When you focus about the introduction, please make sure that you have a final structure. You start with a general concept and then you go and you bring the story of your paper to the need for this new piece of research and where you explain what is the research about at the really end you need to make sure that you state the aim of the paper and of course all the objective that you try to cover the background section is also important because you need to show that you master all the knowledge on the specific topic you're doing your research this is another common thing in which people might get misled thinking ai is gonna do the work for you not quite the AI can help you identify at the beginning key paper that can help you to start with your literature review, but then you need to do the hard work, write down all the story of the state of the art and make sure that you show and highlight at the end of the background why this paper is very much needed. Method and results are generally the easiest part to write of a paper, at least in my experience. In this part, what you should do is describe all the steps that you follow to carry out your research and eventually highlight all the results that you got from your research. Try not to blend with the discussion. As I mentioned before, the discussion needs to be out there at the end of the paper and clearly describe what was the original goal of the paper and how your results help to provide an answer to all the research objectives that you were stating in the introduction. The discussion is also the place where you, of course, acknowledge the limitation of your research no research is perfect 
and eventually the conclusion yes they are important but the conclusion don't need to be a replica of the abstract that is already up there you need just to provide a clear explanation of what are the points that people can learn by reading the full paper and what are the key message that we want to get out of this research the tip number three it's about the formatting of your paper you want to make sure that you have a really good paragraph many times i see paragraph made of one sentence or two sentence or paragraph that are over one page long that's not the way to format a paragraph there is a lot of video on youtube and there is a lot of book that teach you to write proper paragraph that are connected to each other you want to make sure that the reading is a pleasant journey for the reader you don't want to have a bumpy road in which you try to talk about something and then you skip you go to something else and then you go back to the original story you want to make sure that the full story in the paper is coherent the good structure of paragraph is the key to achieve this goal and of course you need to make sure that you don't use too much of bullet points you're not writing like ChatGPT, or ChatGPT is not writing the paper for you so you need to make sure that the paper is reaching the quality of writing that is expected for a journal publication the four tips is about figures and table they are essential for telling the story of your research but i must say that many people use them just for decoration you go through the figures and you barely understand what they are talking about you need to make sure especially that the formatting is not unreadable you need to make sure that the font size is somehow comparable with the font size of the rest of the text in your paper many times i see figures with really really tiny uh, label out there that are nearly impossible to read in pdf format and of course when you print them in a paper format so make sure that the figure are readable same as a table help you to deliver the story and they are not just there to fill some gap in the pagination of your paper the final tips is the fifth one and probably the most important one for your research you need to ask yourself am i really doing a piece of science am i really doing a piece of research many times people confuse an application that could be perfect from the industry with research if you for instance just using some existing tools or simulation or toys that you found online and you just apply for a new case study is probably not enough to justify a research publication how you can identify if you are on the right track it's better you start at the really beginning of your research with the plan and discuss them with your colleagues or supervisor if you are a phd student it's essential at this stage that you identify a really good research gap. Once again, the literature review is the key. Don't let the eye fool you believing that it's doing the work for you. You need to really understand what is the gap out there and try to do the best you can do with your resources to get the best research to provide an answer on this new research question. It's really important to work with your supervisor sometimes it's even better to have multiple supervisors so you can have a different viewpoint on specific research direction so you can keep working and investing months of your time on a topic that is a real topic meaningful for the scientific community i really hope you like this video and i promise you i'm gonna release many more videos so you don't want to miss them so i suggest you to press like and subscribe so you will be notified and also the bell out there so you will be notified with the next video coming on more important topics and if you're struggling in any other research task don't forget to write in the comments and i'm gonna be back to you with a more customized video that will help you with your research journey bye from now